Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you folks here this morning as we come to worship and uh, to celebrate being in God's house this morning. My name is, uh, I am Pastor Richard Smith. I am the family and student ministry director here. And so uh, warmly welcome all of you. Some of you folks are visiting with us this morning. We warmly welcome you and glad you're here. I know that uh, Pastor Fred has got a a couple from uh, out of town that are here visiting and are watching even online. So we're excited that you are here with us this morning. If you're visiting, visiting with us online, we uh, warmly, warmly welcome you. And I need to slow down because my words are on top of each other. And uh, so we thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's a great morning to be here. I know the storms are coming, but in the midst of the storms, whatever you might face, God is there with us always. And I want to continue to encourage you to, to lift each other up and build one another as we worship together this morning. As we begin our worship this morning, I do want to make one announcement. On August 6th, I got the month confused last service because uh, we were on a 12-hour uh, tubing trip yesterday. I mean, the whole trip was 12 hours, not the tubing part. But, uh, and so my brain is still a little scrambled from, uh, from a long day yesterday with our young people. But it was a fantastic day, and we had a lot of fun. And I, I think I brought most of them back, I'm pretty sure. Um, but uh, we had, had such a fun time. It was just beautiful. So um, I invite you to stand this morning as we begin our worship together. Come and share the joy of the Lord. Praise God who gives each person a special gift to be nurtured and shared. Lord, we thank you for these gifts. Come, let us worship God who entrusts us with so much. Lord, make us worthy of your love and trust in us. Amen. Will you remain standing as we sing our opening hymn? Stand up and bless the Lord. invite you to be seated. And I'm going to finish my announcement that I started and just totally forgot. I mean, I tell you, the brain is on override this morning. August 6th is our back to school kickoff for the fall. The schools are starting really early in Cabarrus County. So what that means for all of us, we're starting off the church year August 6th. So instead of it being late August, 
Promotion Sunday and everything uh, starts the 6th. So we're going to have a big breakfast, um, well, not a big breakfast, we have some food, a big Sunday school program um, in the uh, fellowship hall for everyone to come join. Come and find out what's happening in Sunday school this fall and bring children, the adults, everybody. Let's get back to it and get on with our discipleship and, and seeing where God's going to lead us through the study of his word. So uh, it'll be a fun morning that morning. So with that, I want to encourage you as we come to our time of offering to think about, uh, about giving our best. So when we send our kids off to school, we don't say, hey, kids, this, you know, we don't send them like halfway. We, like, we want, expect you to do your best. We, we know that you may not excel in everything, but when you go to school, do the best that you can with what God's given you. When we go to work, there's some of us who are like workaholics that we give it all. And it's like constantly all the time because we want to be the best in, in our fields or whatever. But I want us to consider this morning about giving our best to God. So when you go into work, you're thinking, oh, I got to do this, got to do this, got to do that. How many of us get up in the morning and say, God, use me today in a very, very special way. How can I give you my best and make me aware of those around you. So when it comes to offering ourselves this week, put a little sticker on your mirror. That's what I'm going to do when I get home, is to remember to give God your best, whether it's finances or whether it's time or whether it's just a smile. Like this morning, uh, I walked in the church and Pastor Frederick was so encouraging. He, like, he said something really nice about me this morning. And I'm like, wow, it just changed my whole morning. So I want to encourage you to do that, that same thing for uh, those of you around you as we give our as we come to our time of offering our offering plate is at the back so please if you have it with you just drop it in the plate if you're online with us we invite you to click the link so that you can give to the ministries here at this church so would you join me in prayer gracious lord we thank you so much for your love and for all that you do in our lives we thank you so much for uh, allowing us to to be able to give you have blessed us with so so much god Continue to help us to reach out and be the light in this community through our gifts of time, through our gifts of service, and through the financial offering that we give. May we give you the best of that we have. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand for our doxology as you are able. you to be seated. As most of you know, a couple weeks ago, we uh, returned from our mission trip. And so we wanted to highlight this morning with some of the photos that a lot of times you folks don't get to see from our trip. Uh, this is the Hinton Center up in, uh, up in the mountains. And some of the work that we were doing was repairing decks and helping a lady, uh, making sure that her deck is safe for her. She uh, needs the ramp and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes we're a little silly, as you will see in some of these pictures. <laughs> it's a great opportunity for our young people to learn new skills and to be taught by professionals, like we see right there in that picture. Uh, Roger is so patient with them and helping them learn to use saws and power tools and those kinds of things. That was a prayer labyrinth. There's our homeowner in the little peach shirt there, Miss Charity. And one of the skills we decided we'd work on this year is chopping firewood. And so... Uh, there was a nice evening of quiet after the, a day of chopping firewood, so uh, it was fantastic. I will tell you that uh, the Hinton Center, our last day is in uh, Helen, Georgia, and we get to experience some different kind of culture and food and that kind of thing. But um, the Hinton Center provides a lot of mission outreach to the community of Hayesville, North Carolina. And one of their biggest things is, is that they provide firewood for, they provide 22,000 tons of firewood every year for the community. A lot of the homes up there don't even have electricity. And so they even, uh, during the summer, they're still picking up firewood to cook on. 
uh, and then need more during the winter. So it's kind of an interesting ministry. And you've just seen our young people swinging those axes. We were, uh, we were very fortunate, very blessed that we still have all our toes and fingers. And, and uh, Roger and I and Amy and uh, Janice were a little bit older, but... Um, you know, it worked out fine. And so it was great, great trip. So just wanted you to be involved because part of your offering and part of the thing about being a part of a church is supporting things like that. Seeing kids grow, not just with learning how to use saws and drills, but as growing as a team together and being loved and cared for by the folks who go with them. And, and even learning how to overcome even personal issues, you know, after living with somebody for like four or five days, you know how that goes sometimes if they're not your family. It can be challenging, and, uh, and so it's a great opportunity. So next year when we go back, you folks are also invited to go with us. We want to make it a big deal. It's a great family fun time, and uh, we all survive. So, so thank you for your support of our trip. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Good morning. Um, this morning's scripture comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. This is Paul's letter to the people of the church in Rome, and he says, So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, 
Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. The word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. I invite our children ages three through first grade to go to children's church with Miss Martha. Those who would like to go to children's church and um, help Miss Martha out back there. And she's gonna have a great time, great plan for you. The rest of us, I would invite you to stand as you're able to sing our next song. Oh, guide me, oh thou great Jehovah. seated. Will you pray with me? Gracious Lord, wherever each and every one of us are at this moment, I pray your Holy Spirit would fall upon our hearts, upon our minds and our souls, that you would Help us to quiet those things that distract us and make us restless. That you would bring us a peace 
that can only come from you as we worship this morning. So that we would hear your voice loud and clear. And that those things that prick us, we would pay attention to because it might be you speaking to us. Wanting us to change and to become something greater than we are now. Lord, we know that in this time that there is so much going on. We are so filled with things that distract or cause us pain or worry or anxiety and even strife in our hearts, Lord. Calm all that so that we would know that you are God and that we would hear that voice in our minds and our hearts that says we are loved and we are worthy. So many times the world tells us that we are not worth very much, that we might not be worth listening to, that we might be just invisible almost. But God, help us to hear your voice that says, we are loved. May we be able to see that love in Jesus' eyes when we picture him in our hearts and in our minds. Because it is that love that transforms us into something new and something better that would be bringers of hope and joy and, yes, even laughter into our hearts. God, we thank you for all that you do in our lives. And we thank you for the times of strength when we need you. Help us to remember that you are there for us to lean upon. And no matter what it is that we face, whether it's battles with a disease, whether it's the loss of a loved one, whether it's just plain and simple loneliness, God, help us to know that we are not alone and that we do have the strength every day to worship and praise you and to be a blessing to others. So God, continue to use us in this place and in this church to be that blessing. May we be full of your presence and your spirit this morning. And may more than anything else, may we pay attention to the words that we're about to say, that it would be a unifying song to you, God but also that it would be mantra to us as we learn about forgiving others and trusting you. So God, may you hear our prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, because last week was a different situation. I came in, I said I was coming down 485 this morning, and I was a little more cautious of what was around me. <laughs> if I didn't see anything, it probably was a lot of, not a whole lot of people there, so I'm thanking Richard. Fired at 100 miles an hour for some reason, and Thanks be to God that nobody got hurt. She almost flipped the car over, but it's all because of God's divine grace. To those who don't know me, I'm Frederick Bowman. I'm here this Sunday, thank God. <laughs> to those who are watching on Facebook, I want you to know that thank you for your prayers. Those who have asked me how I was feeling and all, I say, well, some things that old age can't handle, you know, so you will get those aches and pains, but I'm okay. Thank you, church, and thank Richard again and all those who still continue to worship God in spirit and in truth. One of the things that we're continuing to do as the weeks go on is talk about messages. We have a lot of movies that we have experienced. Some of you have seen some of the movies we already preached about, but we talk about the movie Who. Well, let's start by reading the scripture that's coming from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3 and 5, verses 14 through 30. And those who are able to stand, will you please stand? For it is as if a man going on a journey 
some as his slaves and entrusted property to the church. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had the two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent and went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves made a subtle account with them. The one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward and said, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy with a few things. I will put you in charge. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. And you have what is yours. But master replied, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew, did you? that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have the best company with the And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the 10 talents. For to all those who have, more will be given. And they will have an abundance, but those who have nothing, even what they, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless, worthless slave, thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. In this clip, Hoosiers, we find this outstanding man, Jimmy. And I know the text talks about talents and gifts and things of that nature, but whatever God entrusted in us, he's expecting a return. We're here to go under his guidance. But well, here's Jimmy, an outstanding basketball player who had a good relationship with his former coach. Well, his coach died and a new coach came in. But Jimmy was willing to throw basketball to the side and forget about all the gifts that God gave him. One of my favorite actors gave him some encouraging words. And you'll notice in this clip here from the Hoosiers. Jimmy, I didn't see you in class today. Any reason you want to tell me about it? You know, in the 10 years that I coached, I never met anybody who wanted to win as badly as I did. I'd do anything I had to do to increase my advantage. Anybody who tried to block the pursuit of that advantage, I just push them out of the way. Didn't matter who they were or what they were doing. But that was then. You had a special talent, a gift. Not the schools, not the townspeople, not the teams, not Myra Freeners, not mine. It's yours to do with what you choose. Because that's what I believe. I can tell you this. I don't care if you play on the team or not. Notice, if you will, Jimmy, the outstanding basketball player, Gene Hackman must have got to him because he missed that last shot. All the time he was just sinking it. Every time he talked to him, he'd around and go in.
but that last shot, he missed. And there are times in life when we're ready to give up everything. In reality, after hitting this in the face, either we go forward or we go backwards. Why waste that gift that he had? And those who have watched the movie know it's a Cinderella movie. I'm not going to take the sting from that. But we all have been in that circumstance where we just wanted to give up because sometimes life could be hard. So I want to talk about facing new challenges with faith. Facing new challenges with faith. When our faith is tested, when we feel like throwing in the top, God has put a gift in each and every one of us, at least one, that we can always realize that he's there with us. Will you pray? Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. You're the potter, and we are the clay. Mold us and make us after thy will while we're here. Lord, I ask that you send your anointing that makes preaching easy. Hide your servant behind the cross that your people see all of thee and none of me. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight. For Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. Now, Lord, the word is yours. The spirit is yours. And we are yours. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let the people of God say, amen. amen. All of us can contest to the fact that life sometimes presents us with plenty of opportunities where fear sets in. Sometimes situations in our homes, in our workplaces, and even sometimes even in the church. We receive global threats sent through our everyday media and social communications. How the world is really causing fear in some of us as we see in our daily lives. On scales large and small, the world is full of people who choose to use fear to get our attention or to get what they want. Some scare people to hate, get others to hate one another. In this fallen world that we love so much, yet when it hit our door and fear sets in, where do we turn for that anchor that holds us together when the storms of life come that we won't fall apart? I do believe we serve a God the one who made us, who know all about us, the one that even know the number of hairs on our head. He knows what we are doing in every situation and circumstance. He knows how we respond. And there are at least three cases where we could put ourselves in. I don't know. You have to figure out your, your position in this out of these three. One is to take the easy road. Think it's going to go away or everything will be all right. I'm reminded in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, where Jesus reminds us to enter the narrow gate because for wide is the gate and broad is the road and it leads to destruction. But he also reminds us, but small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to everlasting life and that life only leads to him. And very few find it, especially when the situation seems to set in fear. Yes, we sometimes like to take the easy road. If I could just sleep it away, or if I could just lay here for a while, they'll eventually just go away. But there's another category. It's when the Bible talks about being lukewarm. And when you're lukewarm, you never take a stance. Whether it's right or wrong, you're just paralyzed in that same situation. Over in Revelation chapter 3, it talks about the church at Laodicea. Laodicea was a church that was lukewarm, and they grew lukewarm not in one day, but overnight because they focused on wealth. 
They focus on their culture and did not live out their purpose that God intended for them to do. We too is like the church at Laodicea. When we become lukewarm, and as Jesus told us, lukewarm is good for nothing. We don't know which way to turn, but yet we put our purpose on hold. And then there's some just to really just live as a consumer. None of the cares of the world, I'm just passing through. But God has given each and every one of us something for us to be blessed and be a blessing to others. And in our text this morning, he starts out, Matthew, we're talking about the parable of the virgins. We are taught that the great necessity of individual readiness for when Christ comes again. But we don't know the day or the hour when he will return. But in both of these, the virgins and also the talents, he's showing that what are we doing in between the time that he is to return with what he's already given us. My heart goes out to the man who went and hid the one talent that Jesus gave him. We don't know why he hid it. Could have been fear. But he was like the foolish virgins, just going through life in the last minute thinking they'll be ready when God comes again. Gathering up the truth taught here, we can understand even for us that we also stand in the balance. We often wonder, but God initiate three things to us that we must receive if we are going to be his workmen or his vessels for this world. First of all, he calls us. He calls us as servants. He calls us, right there in the 14th verse, he says, he called his own servants and delivered unto him his goods. In other words, he equipped you with something, even with his disciples when they came. Twelve ordinary men that he picked to follow and turn the world upside down. He equipped them with what they need to know to operate in this fallen world. Remember, he says, stay here until you endure the Holy Spirit. They couldn't do nothing without his gift. And God has given each and every one of us a gift. Maybe more than one gift. Some he gave two, some he gave five. So some of you may have all of the gifts, which I doubt you have some. I was telling you, I wanted to run over there and pick up that bass and play that Forrest was playing. I can't play it, but it would have ran them out of here. In the choir, wanted with a song, but I'm sorry, y'all. I'll probably say, you know, sing in the shower. That would be the best place for you. We all have talents, but we don't have the same talents. But Jesus said, I call you as a servant to do his good and perfect will. Whom he calls, he equips. That's why constantly we say we must decrease, that he increase even in times when we fear and of uncertainty. Can you imagine those before us? I think about Abraham, reminded, God told him to go to a place where I will show you. Here he is in the earth of the Chaldees, in a pagan country, and God going to call him and say, go to a place that I will show you. And sometimes God operates that with us. We don't see it until we go. Or we try to make an excuse like Brother Moses. I don't speak well. But God in his wisdom, there's Aaron, your brother. Take him with you. God has equipped us to do the work he has called us to do. There's always apprehension. There's always trying to figure it out. If God showed you what's going to happen in the next week, it probably scared me. I don't know about you. And sometimes he shows you the end. Listen to me. Before he shows you the beginning. Because you ask the question, how am I going to get there, God? He said, not without me. And once I equip you, you'll be ready. 
So God calls all of us, those who are ch children of God, if you've given your life to Christ, God calls us as servants. It's not the time to sit on the sideline and not use at least the one gift that God has given to us. But not only that, he gives us a gift by the measurement of what he gives. He measures our gifts to every person according to their abilities. So he's not going to give you more than you can handle or more that you can perform or do. All have not the same abilities because all have not the same faith. So he gives us on an as-need basis to each one of us. That's not the time to look at this person have all these gifts and be jealous. No, he gives us in measurements what we can handle. And if we're giving God our best, that's the best you can do. Even if you keep other fans, just keep the fans. Keep doing a good fan counter or keeper. There's no big gifts and little gifts, but he's trying to tell you it's measured. Not the same ability. And if the servant who got only one talent, and don't use it, it's this one who went and hid it. It's no use. None of us is good as all of us. That's why there are different gifts, and that's why the, the, it talks about the body of Christ. If you got to be a little toe, just be a good little toe. That's important. You hit your little toe. <laughs> we'll know that it's important. So it's by the measurements of your gifts. Uh, some of you may know Peter Marshall was the former chaplain for the U.S. Senate. And he went to Peter Marshall, and uh, one of the senators came to Peter Marshall and said, you know, I was making uh, $20,000, and I was able to give back $2,000 in tithes. He said, but now I'm making $500,000. I can't afford to give $50,000 away. He said, I have a problem. And Peter Marshall said, yes, you do have a problem. Pray about it. Let's pray that God will reduce your salary back to what you can give. <laughs> we look at things and don't realize how blessed we are. We're blessed to be a blessing. That's the purpose. Too much is given, much is required. So it's not so much this person is better than that. It's by the measurements of your faith and what he puts in your hands. So God calls us as servants. He measures our gifts. But also in using of your talents. Those who receive God's talents are compelled to do something with it. Not to sit back on it. Not to harbor it. But to use it to his glory. Like this servant here, he buried his. The one and only gift. He received. He that received the five, the he that received the two, they used them and they multiplied them. And what did Jesus do? He took the talent away from the one who had the one. Was it pride? Was it shame that made him bury his gift that God has given him? Now imagine what would happen with Jimmy would have just threw it away if this coach didn't come at the right time to give him encouragement. His whole, and you know the Cinderella story, he ended up coaching the team. I'm not going to take the stain from that this morning. But when our times of challenges and our faith seem to be weak, God will send somebody. Oh, God, and the encouragement that I get sometimes, sometimes in your loneliest times, no one used to do. That's why even it's so important I tell my clergy and friends, colleagues, we keep each other accountable because there are going to be some challenging times, but you need somebody to come at the right time and say it's going to be all right. Words mean a lot. There's somebody who may have the gift of encouragement. Remind me of my, a colleague friend of mine, he said he was in seminary, and he had this guy, he didn't preach very well, he was not a good preacher out of the seminary class. Let's just put that there. But what he did, he knew that his gift was not so much in the preaching. He said, but this guy, he don't know why he did it. He started looking in the newspaper where he preached. 
And he noticed that a lot of funerals was at funeral homes and not at churches. So it was an indication that that person didn't have a church home. But he had a gift of compassion where he went through the papers and he would call them and say, you know, I'm just an area pastor. I would like to help y'all during this time of bereavement. What do you think happened? His church grew. Not only his preaching, but his compassion. See, God has a way of giving gifts and talents that we never could understand. But here his church grew because he had a gift that God had given him. We try to measure and compete against each other all day. We're always looking at the Joneses, what the Joneses have. No, what did God put in your hands to use to his glory? So it is the using of your talents. God has a way of doing that. And when we are blessed with his gifts and grace, we don't know what a person is going through in a situation. It may be a kind word or a deed or just something that you know that God has placed on your heart to do. And some things are just natural. Some people just have natural talent. But never cover up the gifts that God has given to you. And sometimes things can be confusing, but God will give us this thing called wisdom. I believe I said that one time before. I have three degrees. Nothing could compare to the wisdom I received from a person who just had eighth grade education. And that was my mother. The wisdom that would come from her mouth was more valuable then. And you have people who give you that wisdom that make you understand this world. Tell about the young man who decided to take a vacation. Because y'all look like y'all need to laugh out now. And he went to the bank, and he went to the, to the banker, and he gave his, he said, I'd like to borrow $5,000. Banker say, okay, what do you have for collateral? Choice. So the man went in there and said, yeah, this is good enough. So the man went on his trip for two weeks, came back, and the banker approached him and said, let me ask you a question. I did some background check on you, and I found out you're a millionaire. Why would you want to buy, borrow $5,000? He said, well, your balance is $5,000. $15.45. He paid the man his money. And he said, why did you do that? The bank asked, why did you do this? He said, well, you walk in Manhattan with, a, with your Rolls Royce being safe for $15.45. <laughs> Wisdom. Now, don't y'all try that nowhere, OK? Please. So when you really understand the Lord will come again, what are you doing in between times as the virgins and also those with talents? What are you doing in between time for his return? When he comes to reckon with you and what have you done with my time and talent and grace and mercy that I have given you? Yes, in this life you're going to have some trials and tribulations. Fear will set in, but God will override all of that. So why is that important? For the good and faithful servant will hear these things. First, it'll be a commendation. You'll hear those words say, well done, good and faithful servant. I told him this morning, I guess I had to tell it again. Young man was getting ready to go over to the Lord, and he came to the gate to St. Peter. And St. Peter said, you know you have to have 100 points to get into heaven. He said, 100 points? He said, I could, well, I was a good attendance of church. I put a lot of money in church and things like that. He said, well, that's three points. He said, well, you know, I also led the Boy Scout group. St. Peter said, that's three more points. He said, well, you know, I, I was the chair many ministries in church while I was there. He said, well, that's three more points. Said, well, I ain't going to never get to 100 points. He said, by the grace of God, it's the only way I'll get it. He said, come on in. <laughs> it's the grace of God on all of us to hear that commendation says, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Then there's the exaltation. Did he not say, I will make you ruler over many? 
And those who bless me will be blessed with more. That's an exaltation when he sees you. He said, I will make you ruler and give you a place of distinction and honor because you serve with your gifts that God has given you for this time. Commendation. Exhortation. But the greatest thing is communion with him. When we see him face to face and you hear those words, say, enter into the joy of the Lord, a condition that's for fullness blessing, that we see him face to face and say, happy fellowship. So you have commendation, exhortation, and communion with God that your work is done. And that's what we all, those that have gone on, we're still waiting for his return. But whatever God has given you, use it to his glory. And you know the good news is, God believes in us. God has entrusted each and every person with a wide variety of assortments of gifts or skills or talents or opportunities. He has given it to us, each and every one, by our measurement that he has, not by nobody else. He knows what you can handle. If you have that one talent of gift, use it to his glory. Because God has entrusted the gifts in all of us to use them creatively and to use them joyfully to bless others and to provide a better return on what he's invested in us. Life gets hard, but for the true believer, we walk by faith and not by sight. You can easily get discouraged by what you see, but faith is the source of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when you use it to his glory, God rejoice. Don't bury it. Use it. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let the church. Amen. It is so great to be in the house of the Lord this day and time, and we're watching a storm, but look how bright, how God is still in control. And he's the one who controls everything. And now as we stand for our closing hymn, one of my favorite, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. When we see him face to face, we just see a taste. This is just rehearsal. Y'all didn't get that. This is just rehearsal. It's not what it's going to be when we come into his glory. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Will you please stand? Maybe there's somebody this morning, candidate for baptism on your Christian experience, I've never seen a Christian soldier without a station. And I pray that we, I'm telling you right now, we're not a perfect church. But if you join that perfect church, you're going to mess it up. But we're trying our best to do what God has called us to do. Maybe you desire prayer this morning. I know we have prayed from the altar, this, from the pulpit this morning, but you desire prayer. We do not want you to be discouraged of what this, this earth could give us. God is not the author of fear. Is him and him alone controls all. Blessed assurance, Jesus.
Gracious God, we thank you for this mountain of privilege and what a privilege it is to be called your children. You promise that no good thing you will hold from those who believe in you. Thank you for the gifts that you have given to all of us to edify your kingdom, but more than anything, that somebody may come and say, I yield, I yield. What must I do to inherit eternal life? We are your vessels. Allow us not to grow weary in well-doing, but we will reap our reward. Although this fallen world could be challenging, let us not forget, to you be all the glory and majesty and dominion, power and authority comes from on high. Now may the love of God the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of us as we part from this place, but never from your presence. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Amen.